Texas Ranger Station 58, 18 bombers, altitude estimated 15,000. Course southwest, now directly overhead. This is Mojave. Yeah, Mojave. A big bunch of planes are flying over here, going like Sam Hill and headed for Los Angeles. Yeah, okay. Battery B, 52nd Monterey, to warning net command. 27 heavy bombers passing over here at estimated altitude, 12,000, changing course from south to east. Warning net command to Battery B, 52nd Monterey. Message received, okay. Warning net command to 23rd Pursuit Squadron. Go ahead. Warning net command to Battery A, Morro Bay. Repeat message, please. Repeat message, please. 38th Reconnaissance Squadron to Warning Net Command. Large enemy formation just sighted over Palm Springs. Southbound attackers estimated over Santa Barbara in 12 minutes, sir. Headed directly for Los Angeles. That's my ground speed, 260. Transmit enemy positions and course to all pursuit squadrons and anti-aircraft units. Order 38th the Reconnaissance Squadron maintain contact with enemy formation over Palm Springs. Blackout immediately. Yes, sir. Turn your boys loose with their sirens, Chief. Yes, sir. From the roof of the municipal building, we're bringing you an eyewitness account of the first simulated air raid upon Los Angeles. Below us are the glittering lights of a great city at play and at peace. Men and women are... There go the blackout sirens now. Turn off your lights, pull down your blinds. Automobiles, please switch off your headlights. Stand by your radios for further instructions. Backing up. You there, in the drugstore. Turn off that neon sign. Turn off your headlights, Mac. Pursuit Squadron reporting successful interception affected westbound enemy formation. We estimate all enemy units to converge over Los Angeles in eight minutes. Order all remaining Pursuit Squadrons up to intercept. Yes, sir. hear them.
thankful the explosions are up there and that they're not real bombs. again, once more the city takes up the tempo of normal life. No homes have been shattered, no fires sweep the gutted streets of a murdered city. No terror or sorrow fills the upturned eyes of helpless civilians, for the United States is at peace. But these realistic maneuvers are convincing guarantee that American soldier and citizen alike intend to be prepared. We return you now to our main studio. One moment, please. We have a bulletin here. An Army Flying Fortress bomber en route back from maneuvers is reported to have crashed in the desert north of March Field. And here is another bulletin. The fate of the crew is not yet known, and officials refuse to comment on the unconfirmed report that a woman was found dead in the wrecked plane. Charge 1. Violation of the 84th Article of War. Specification. In that Jefferson Young, 2nd Lieutenant Air Corps, having received a lawful command from Captain Everett Mercer, Air Corps, his superior officer, not to attempt a takeoff from the scene of an emergency landing in a flying fortress airplane, did near Spring Canyon, California, willfully disobey the same. With the result that injuries were sustained by the crew, a passenger was killed and the airplane destroyed. Charge two, violation of the 96th Article of War. Specification, in the Jefferson Young, 2nd Lieutenant Air Corps, did at March Field, California, permit an unauthorized passenger one Sally Vaughan on board a flying fortress airplane in violation of existing regulations and to the prejudice of good order and military discipline. How does the accused plead to specification charge one? Guilty, sir. What is the plea to specification charge two? Guilty, sir. That's not true, sir. Any further interruption will necessitate your removal from the courtroom. Sit down. You have no further statement? No, sir. Court will be closed. Let me see the record of the accused. You must be crazy. Yes, skip it, Al. You're fixing yourself up for good. Let me take care of that. seeing things. Thought I saw Carolyn. Listen, Jeff, I'm not going to let you toss up your job for my sake. I'm going in and tell him the whole story. One cheer, buddy, you and I'll break your neck. Well, gentlemen, here's the record. Jefferson Young III, Lawrenceville Preparatory School, Yale University. Applied for Air Corps training and was admitted to Randolph Field two years ago this spring. <laughs> attention. Down here at Randolph, they don't care who you are, or where you come from. The Army is only interested in two things. Can you fly? Will you make an officer? And they'll find out. Now, we upperclassmen will try to help you learn what we've learned in the last four months. Before you report to the flight surgeon for a physical recheck, take a look at the man on either side of you. Go ahead, take a good look. In four months, one of you won't be here. Report to your squad leaders. Dismissed. One out of three washed out. You two ought to toss a coin to see which one he's talking about. Oh, he's talking about me. Regulations say you can't be over six foot two. That's just what I was when I enlisted, but I grew a half inch waiting to be admitted.
boys will be out flying pretty soon. You scared of flying? No, sir. Scared of not flying. Yeah. I know just how you feel. I'm Colonel Riley. First man to go up in a free balloon. 1879. Went up on half an hour's notice. All they told me was to drop sandbags. And I dropped them. Floated 800 miles in five days. When I gave my report to President Ulysses S. Grant, I said the air. The air's the thing. It's here to stay. I hope I stay with it. Well, son, if you run into a storm, just call on me. I've been giving the Army expert advice on training young flyers for the last 40 years. Hello, sandbags. Hello. Aren't you a new cadet, mister? Yes, sir. Supposed to be in the hospital taking a physical recheck, aren't you? Yes, sir. We'll take off. I'm going to dress down that young upstart for not saluting me. That's all, young man. Yes, sir. Son, you got the makings of an officer and a gentleman. Thank you, sir. Hey, you better quit stalling and get over to the flight surgeon's office for that recheck. I'm going. You fellas passed, huh? Why not? Nothing the matter with us. Gee, shrimps are lucky. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't break training for four years, and what happens? I'm overgrown. You know, I had the same trouble. Till I found out if you stand at attention for a while and jump up and down, you can maybe jog a half inch off. Yeah? Why, sure, jockeys do it all the time. You mean like this? Yeah, only higher. Oh. Hmm. Well, fancy that. Hey, uh... Uh, Ludlow, Al Ludlow. Cassidy! <laughs> He's a polo player. So what? J.Y. Oh, yeah, Jeff Young III. Eight goals. He's filthy rich, Ludlow. Eight goals and eight million bucks. Is that the way they rate him? They tell me, Young. What does a tough guy like you want down here, anyway? Well, here's a good place to find out fast just how tough you are. Oh, well, I don't have to find out. This is what they gave me for being the toughest guy in the Big Ten. <laughs> it's too bad they don't have cheerleaders down here. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the shoe that kicked the winning field goal against Notre Dame last year. You know, when you get back from the flight surgeons, I'm going to show you my baby pictures. Oh, swell. Well. If you get back. Yeah. Well, come on, baby. Bounce, bounce. Uh, oh. Oh, yeah. I wish I'd have known about this before. I could have been doing it in the train coming down. See where it's going to be awful noisy sleeping in the Hall of Fame. Say, Ludlow. What did you do before you came here? I was a mechanic. Worked in garages, airplane factories. Sold. Tried just about everything. Well, uh, where'd you get your two years college equivalent? Night school? Never stayed long enough in one place. I got a satchel full of diplomas from correspondence schools. What brought you down here? I want to fly. I've heard worse reasons. Say, uh, they wouldn't really wash a man out for a half an inch, would they? Sonny, down here they wash you out for a bad haircut. Oh, yes, sir. Ooh. What are your plans after you graduate, Cassidy? Oh, try for a commission. Get a job with the airline, maybe. And... Uh, yes, sir. Uh... You mean I pass? You mean I'm only 6'2"? You're 6'2 and a half. But since you added the extra half inch after you enlisted, I guess it's on the Army. But don't go anymore. Our airplanes don't stretch. Oh, I won't, sir. I mean, I won't, sir. <laughs> I pass! I pass! My clothes! <laughs> I forgot my clothes, sir. What's the matter? Don't you like your mechanics outfit, Mr. Jeff Young III? 
Hey, I'm in. Hey, bullets. I'm in. I made it. 82. Oh. 82. 54. See, Harry? Well, oof. <laughs> That's the play that made me famous. Take out two guys at the same time. <laughs> As you were. Well, where do you misters think you are? At a freshman rally? This is the army. We expect you to act in a military manner. Size? Thirteen. Thirteen? That'll have to be special issue. Terrible mistake. What's that, mister? I thought they taught you to fly down here, sir. They do. You'll meet your flying instructor tomorrow. Oh! That's well. Cadet Young, sir. Cadet Ludlow, sir. Cadet Cassidy, sir. Cadet Masters, sir. Cadet Wilcox, sir. Now we'll drop all that. I want you to relax. This is an airplane. I'm going to teach you to fly one, I hope. This is the ship we'll start out on, so let's climb aboard and look her over. I'll tell you everything I know about it. All I ask is your strict attention. I expect you to make mistakes, but don't make excuses. That's the stick, the control stick. You move it forward, your nose goes down. You pull it back, your nose comes up. These instruments and controls look complicated, but a week from now they won't. Your flight instruments are in the center. Bank and turn, airspeed, rate of climb and altimeter. All right, any questions? Good. You, Young. I'll take you first, in the front. All we do this morning is to shake hands with flying. Begin to feel at home in the plane. Get familiar with the sky. Slip into your chute. Buckle your belt.
me on the controls. Lightly, lightly, we're flying, not hauling a load of cement. Ludlow, hold your speed constant. If you're gonna dive her in, dive her in. If you're gonna stall her in, stall her in. But don't vacillate. You can't learn accuracy without a constant glide. Land shorter this time. Stop using the whole field. Fly the airplane, Ludlow. Don't let the airplane fly you. Here come Alan Mercer. Scramble those eggs Mercer had for breakfast. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, chalk up a buck against Mr. Ludlow. Four stars coming up. Mr. Ludlow is way out ahead in the Dumbbell Derby. Oh, what difference does it make how good or how bad you are? They don't send us up to Solo. Yeah. Well, maybe they're going to wash out the whole battalion. <laughs> hey, hey, as you were, mister. As you were. Oh, hey, four stars. Pay up a dollar for the kitty. I'll pay you up in the room. Okay. We ought to make you a wholesale right. You use too much rudder on the left turn, you feel the wind on your right cheek. You don't use enough rudder, you feel it on the other cheek. What am I doing here anyway? This is no place for a dumb mechanic. Don't take that attitude, Al. Shucks, I'm dumb too, but what the heck? You can't fuck nature. Young? Yeah. On the line right away. Solo. Okay. Off that chip. We're pulling for you. Don't card me, boys. Just oh, give me yeah, air, will you? Yeah. Don't think too much. Just relax. Take Go it out away. there and show him. Give him the old power play right through center. And remember, keep your head. Don't worry about me. All you got to do is this climb a little faster and glide a little further. That's yeah. all. Yeah, that's, that's right, right. Jeff. But don't get nervous. I'm not nervous. No? no. What do you got that flying suit on backward for then? Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let him take my himself. He's a big boy. Give us the other arm. Come on, get your arm. Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you thinking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here he is. Young. Yes, sir. Come on, Young. You're going out to Solo, not to get married. Yes, sir. Oh. Good luck, Jeff. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, 
would you mind your casting a shadow in my reflector? Haven't you ever seen a bomber before? Never with landing gear like that. Aren't you making kind of free with that camera around an army post? Look, I'm trying to make a series of pictures for national magazines. The full permission and cooperation of the United States Army. We'll set up over there for the next one, Mickey. Okay, Miss Bartlett. Bartlett, 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 darling. Oh! Well, yes, Carolyn Bartlett, I know you. Photography's dynamic symmetry girl, yes. Kansas corn silos, steam turbines, private life of the blast furnace, why, sure. Yes, and I must say, I find them even more interesting than Junior Birdman. Hey, Dopey. You're in Clover. She likes blast furnaces. You know her? Do I know her? Come here. Miss Bartlett, I'd like you to meet Mr. Cassidy. How do you do? How are you? Can I help? Uh, well... Yes. Would you like to hold that reflector for me? Oh, yes, ma'am. Here. Mickey, give it to Mr. Cassidy and get my other camera, will you? Okay, Miss Bartlett. Bring it over here. Yeah. Some more. Come on, some more. Now, that's fine. Now, you just hold it there. Cassidy! Cassidy! Here, sir! Hold that, will you? That's your chance to get a picture of some real flying. My instructor can't wait to get the plane with me. It gives him a chance to catch up on his sleep. <laughs> You know, it surprises me every time that guy gets off the ground. Really? He seems rather capable to me. Yes, sir. You're wasting time. Stand by to meet the ship when you're scheduled next. Yes, sir. In the back. Take me out to a practice area and show me some improvement. Yes, sir. Progress is a fair average. But you're a little bit on the cocky side. Now, just in case your head is getting a little bit too big for your bonnet, I'm going to show you a couple of things that you'll have to learn very soon. This first is what we call a slow roll. Check your belt. Okay, sir. and you follow me through on the control. I said climber back to 3,000 feet.
Lieutenant Plankton speaking. Ah, uh, uh, Flying Cadet Cassidy wishes to report he just fell out of an airplane, sir. Right. What? You men who have soloed are starting to feel like pretty hot pilots. During the past week, several minor violations of flying regulations have cropped up. One pretty serious one. So go easy on trains, cattle, individual combat, and outside loops. That's all. Cassidy. Cassidy! Oh, yes, sir. Stay with us, will you? Yes, sir. It's a good thing that big dumbbell's a natural-born flyer. You men that haven't soloed yet, I'd like to offer you a little tip. The Army has just so much time to devote to finding out whether each of you is a flyer or not. So make every minute in the air count. That's all. Let alone. Want to see you a minute. Would you say that I know my business? Well, I think so around here, sir. And why am I losing out with a man that's got everything it takes to make a flyer? What's on your mind, Ludlow? Family? Money? Women? Just tell me I'm through, sir. I can take it. Why don't you forget her? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I think I do. I can't forget her. I keep seeing her the way she was the night we busted up. I keep hearing her say, you're a flop. You'll never be anything but a $15 a week grease monkey. And I was sore, too. I told her to beat it, and she went. There was another guy. She said she was going places, and she will, the quickest way she can. After that, I threw up my job and pulled out. Things weren't going, to, going so well, so I kept telling myself it was just bad breaks. But after a while, I began to wonder, maybe it was me. I always wanted to fly. That's one of the reasons I joined the Air Corps. But it was more than that, sir. You see, I had to know about myself. If I wash out, then she's right. I never told that to anybody, sir. Suppose she is right. I know a lot of swell guys that are $15 a week grease monkeys. You know, the trouble with you is that you're trying too hard. Relax. Stop tensing up. That's part of learning to fly. The big part. I know that, sir, but... Ludlow, it... look. Flyers are just like all other men. And they fall into the same two groups. Those that women have made happy. Those that women have made unhappy. But whether they're lucky that way or not, they just keep plugging along at their job like everybody else does. Now, if you can't forget this girl, don't. Stop trying. But get this through your head. You can still make a whale of a flyer. <laughs> Ludlow, I'm sending you up for a check ride with the flight commander tomorrow. I've told him I thought you'd make a pilot. I still think so. Now, don't make a monkey out of me. Catastrophic instability is the characteristic of an aircraft which, having deviated from level flight, tends to increase the deviation. Look, Jeff, I've soloed, haven't I? Now, now, why do I have to learn this junk? You want to know what you're doing, don't you? Well, hey, Jeff. Yeah. You went over to Lieutenant Ronson's office right away. Ha! They must need some expert advice. Cadet Young reporting, sir. Perhaps you know about Miss Bartlett's presence at the Post, Young. Yes, sir. She's looking for somebody to photograph as the average cadet here. And you've been selected. Oh, me, sir? 
You will cooperate with Miss Bartlett whenever it doesn't interfere with your duties. Well, Miss Bartlett's a very charming girl. It was nice of her to select me, but... Miss Bartlett didn't select you. The Army did. I came down here to be a flyer, sir, not a model. Did you ever see any of those screwy pictures she takes? Mr. Young, we didn't call you here in the capacity of an art critic. This is official. Yes, sir. I'm so sorry to trouble you, Mr. Young. Oh, it's no trouble at all. And then would you mind stepping over by the window? Hmm. Oh, turn your profile into the light, hmm? Oh, I'm a bit afraid of the mouth. On the line of the jaw there, uh... Dear, what, what, what do you think, Mickey? Lean over so Mickey can see. I don't think the chin's going to do it. It, it. What was the name of the cadet with you yesterday? Cassidy. I really feel that Cadet Cassidy might be more suitable. That's all, Young. Send Cadet Cassidy over. Yes, sir. Now look, Dopey. Catastrophic instability is the characteristic of an aircraft which, having deviated from... Hey, I think I got it now. Catastrophic... Yeah. What's the matter? Maybe I'm crazy. Well, what's the matter? They want you over to public relations office right away. Masters, would you take this Greek god to Ronson's office? But don't chip the profile. Come on, hurry up. They're waiting for you. The lady of the lens is on the loose. Oh. Oh. Lady of the lens. Oh. Come on, Messer. Come on. He's going to be the great lover of the Air Corps. Roll up your flaps, will you? That's a nice talk to a hot pilot. You're in a class all by yourself, aren't you? That's what they tell me. Just watch me up there for a while, and maybe you'll solo, too. Oh, come on, Al. Put it in the hangar. Give me those. I told you to lay off. Hey, you can't quit now. I'm on the deck. Can't do, mister. Cutlow. Break it up. Break it up. You're supposed to be a gentleman down here, Ludlow. You're not in the garage now. You don't have to tell me where I belong or what I'm going back to, but before I go... Lucky caught you, mister. They wash out fast down here for striking an upperclassman. Now, what's this all about? Who started it? I did, sir. We had a little argument. I got sore and I popped him. I don't blame him for losing his head. You report to the oiler room in proper uniform to walk a punishment tour. Yes, sir. You stuck your neck out, mister. But you're in enough trouble. We'll skip it this time. That's all. You don't have to take any raps from me. Don't be a chump. I hate to see anybody get washed out before they had a chance to do what they came down here for. What's the difference? They send me up in the washing machine tomorrow. I'm sorry I put the rib on. I know just how you feel. That's a laugh. How can you know? You've never been in a storm in your life. No. I've been in a storm ever since I came here. Every time I walk down that flying line, I see those faces that nearly drive me nuts. 300 guys, all daring Jeff Young III to be as good as Joe Dokes. I never figured you were afraid of anything. I'll tell you something else. The louder I talk, the more scared I am. That's strictly between you and me. tomorrow. They were lucky for me. 
Keep swinging, Al. You still got a chance. Now watch me talk myself out of walking a tour. Other points of interest, Mr. Cassidy? Ludlow, you're next. It's going to seem funny not getting into these anymore. What are you talking about? The seat of those pants will be worn out before you turn that suit in. Yeah, I'm not kidding myself. Look at Grady, Collins, Anderson. When they send you up in the washing machine, it's a one-way ticket home. Flight commander's ready for you now, Ludlow. Come on, climb in. I know I'm through. Why do they have to drag it out? You're not through, and why lie down and quit? I'm not a quitter. I know when I'm licked. Get me out of this straight hey, jacket. Listen. You're reporting on that flying line. I have to smack you down and carry you there. You came here to fly, you're gonna fly. Now dump that flight commander into the ship and ride the pants off him. Come on. Hey, fellas, congratulate me. They just passed me on my pile on eights. What's the matter with him? All bad news is out there. The works? Yep. Did you hear him flying his pillow last night? Gee, he's a funny guy. Yeah, you're funny, too. Like a wing breaking off. Well, what did I say? Oh, shut up. Cadet Ludlow reporting, sir. I'd love. Before I send you up to the flight commander, I want you to take the ship up alone. Alone? You heard me. The beat team in trouble beyond the south end of the field. My motor's caught. Put the nose down. Get it down. Gotta keep flying speed. Pick a field and relax. There's one. No good. Downwind. Find another one. Quick. Only got 400 feet. Come on. I can get in that one. Turn now. Don't change your mind. Turn. Relax. Loosen up. That feels small. Have to clip those treetops and fish, Taylor. Cut in a little soon now and stay high. You can kill altitude, but you can't get it back without your motor. Keep flying speed and relax. 
Now, fish tailor. Still too fast. Once more. That's better. Okay, level out. Drop her in. Don't dive at the ground. Careful, careful. Don't hit those trees. Cut the switch before you hit. Maybe I can ground loop her. Hit that left brake. Hit it. <laughs> Are you all right? Sure. Both shave, wasn't it? What happened, Ludlow? Your motor conk out on you? Yes, sir. You got plenty of gas and the valve is turned on. Must have been a vapor lock. Well, we can't fly her out of here. We'll have to truck her. I don't know how you got her in here without a shoehorn. Well, Ludlow, now you see the value of knowing how to make a short approach? Yes, sir. Not a scratch. Is this the student you were going to send up for a washout ride? What washout ride? That's Navy stuff, ducking the last guy to solo. I never heard of him doing it down here. Of course you didn't. I just made it up. Scram! Here he comes. Going, Al. Nice. Like a handkerchief, Ludlow. They call it. Got on a dime, Al. Congratulations, boy. You really did it. Hot pilot number one. Thanks. They turned the trick. Go ahead, keep him. That landing is one for the record, Al. And they used to call him Knucklehead. Yeah. <laughs> Time for your store closed. We're checking off his reservation to spend our first weekend in San Antonio. We're gonna bomb all the beer joints. Oh, gee, I can't go with you. I got a date. Oh, gosh, I'm late now. Gonna go get my suit creased. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you understand catastrophic instability? Yes. <laughs> This war dance is on me. We'll settle that later. Oh, no. I just drew a month's pay. Seventy-five bucks. And I'm showing you the bright lights. How many, please? Two, please. Two? Let's see. Hey, look. The center throws me the ball back, and I get it, and I tuck it underneath my arm. Let's break up that formation. Right on your tape. work is never done. What pose is this? Nightlife and flying cadet? Occasionally I come out of my dark room, Mr. Young. Well, that's fine. Fine. Do you mind if we try to liven up the party? Not at all. Uh, waiter, two chairs, please. Yes, sir. Coming right up, sir. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Miss Bartlett, this is Mr. Ludlow, the uh, hottest pilot in the class. How do you do? How do you do? Cassidy was just telling me the most fascinating story. Do go on, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, yes. About the time when he had the ball on the two-yard line. Skull fractured. Oh, no, no, it wasn't a fractured skull, it was a broken rib. Oh, that's right, how silly of me. Quiet, please. You see, he's tired, irritable, overworked, overexposed. But how about my having this next dance? Certainly. You can find somebody to dance with you. <laughs> oh. Romance. Oh, I was born. You ought to put 
that in the menu. Yeah. How'd you like to meet her? Oh, no. Uh, you just wait here and I'll show you how it's done. Excuse me. Jeff. They insist For I was born to love If I could find just the one I've in mind I would call it a day Tell him to stay And then bid all the rest be gone If you dance with me, I'll put you in the air corps. Thanks, but I don't think I'm the type for wings. Oh, I think so. Say, who are you? Jeff Young. <laughs> now I know you're crazy. So, it's fourth down. We've got 98 yards to go for a touchdown. Now then... Should I play safe and kick, or should I take a chance and run? <laughs> I said, should I kick or run? Well, how many men on base? You know, strictly speaking, behind that guy's back, he's kind of conceited. Yes, yeah, certainly. Tom, would you like to dance? Mm, yeah. Are you really Jefferson Young? Just Jeff to you, please. You don't look like your pictures. I'm sorry you're disappointed. I'm not. You look just like you should. Got me all figured out, haven't you? Yes, I think so. You're smarter than I am. Well, I never know what I'm going to do next. Oh, Miss Bartlett, uh, I'd like you to meet Miss... Uh, Vaughan. Miss Vaughan. How do you do? You're saying beautifully, Miss Vaughan. Thank you. that cutting in on your girl? Oh, that's, uh, that's Tom Cassidy. My girl? Who says she's my girl? She does, with her eyes. Ah, oh, you're way off your course. My life would be a lovely thing. How I cling, for I was born to love. No. Really? The Al, I'd like you to meet Miss Vaughan. She was born to love. Mr. Ludlow. How do you do? You two dance together. I have to intercept a pass. Hello, Al. Hello, Sally. Well, that's a warm welcome. Lay off, Sally. You started all over down here. What'd you follow me for? Don't flatter yourself. I'm down here with the band. Okay, Al, if that's how it is. That's how it is. You messed up my life once. That's enough. Don't worry. I struggled along without you. I just hope you find what you're looking for. Really, Jeff Young, third. Don't waste your time, Sally. He's way out of your league. Think so?
Tom can't make it today. The average young American is boning for a navigation quiz. But if I can be of any help, I'll only be too glad to, uh, provided you can shoot around the chin. Thanks, I think I have about everything I need. You mean you're finished? Mm-hmm. Then what do you do? Go home. Where's that? San Antonio. No kidding, really? Well, fine, I'll be over Saturday afternoon. You'll find me photographing bananas. Flying to Guatemala City tomorrow. Guatemala City? Hmm. Oh, I wish I'd known you were leaving. I'd have been a little more... Well, I, uh... I yes? Would... Oh. You got my pictures yet, young woman? Yes, they're over here, Colonel. Why don't you take off in a balloon? Yeah, that's the one. Creeping up on the enemy. They won't be dry till tomorrow. Yeah, well, I can wait. Oh. What's that? Have to take some negatives off. Well, oh, be careful. No light in here. Hey, ever tell you about the time the Comanches were surrounding Fort Carney? No. I spotted them in my balloon. And down I come on them raining sandbags. You know, Colonel, I hear there's a full dress review on the parade grounds. There is? Mm -hmm. Oh, now somebody ought to tell me about these things. I can't keep a whole army waiting. No. Bye. Look, do you have to go to Guatemala? I'm just a working gal, you know. I have to go where they send me. What's Cassidy doing on that one? This one isn't Cassidy. Don't remember seeing him around here. You ought to know him. You see him every day. He's, uh, no glamour boy. His ears are too big. But he'll make a magazine cover just the same. That's a good face. A good, homely, tough face. There's a lot of moxie there. You'll never see this baby goose-stepping in a colored shirt with his arm outstretched. What a guy. What's his name? Yankee. Joe Yankee. He's a composite of a lot of the cadets down here. Say, so isn't that my chin? Might be. You know, it's a funny thing. I've got a composite picture, too. A girl, Miss America, in a green smock. Always got her hands in hypo solution. Knows all the angles and waits for developments. That's rather cute. Can I kiss you? Uh-huh. Hmm? Oh, darn it. Every time I start to have a good time in this army, a bell rings. Hmm. Well, I... That's fine, Mercer. Congratulations. Thanks. I'm turning my students over to you. You know most of them. Ludlow, Wilcox, Young, front and center. Lieutenant Hopkins is going to be your flying instructor from now on. I didn't know you were leaving us, sir. He's just been made flight commander. Well, congratulations, sir. Thank you. We'll miss you, sir. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Cassidy and Masters are still upstairs. They'll probably be in in a minute. Sorry. It's all right, Nancy. 
Sorry, Please. sorry for what? For sorry. avoiding a collision? For saving another man's life? You got a handkerchief? How about you? You all right? Our hands just a little burn. Young, take Ludlow over to the hospital. Have him take care of those hands. Thank you. I'm all right. All right, come on. Oh, nothing very serious. They'll be all right in a couple of days. Go ahead, say it. You know I'll let your poor masters out alone. They all know it. Oh, what are you talking about? I just got there first. Sure. You just got there first. Couldn't find him. He came back here for about five minutes, changed into his civilian clothes and left. Did he say anything? Yeah. Doesn't make sense, though. I hand him a couple of letters from Guatemala addressed to Jeff Young III just as plain as day. So he says he isn't the guy that they were written to and tears them up and throws them in the wastebasket. He didn't even save me the stamps. Come on. Get me your laundry. Present. Good night. Where do you think you're going? Into town. Now, don't be a dope. Why stick your neck out, too? I gotta find him. That guy's in a real storm. Took you so long? Oh, I was, I was trying to be a flyer. You won't be if they catch you down here on a weekday night. Eh, let them catch me. I'm through. I'm no Joe Yankee. Who? If I want to fly, I'll buy a blimp. You can buy anything you want. Yeah. Anything but wings. Stick with me tonight, will you? Don't leave me alone. Come on. Let's get out of here. Johnny, tell the boss I'm leaving early tonight. Yes, ma'am. Kind of late for you to go around ringing doorbells? They told me at the colonnade Jeff was with you. <laughs> what if it isn't all there? Take a seat, cadet. Take a seat. Have anything in the house? Nothing's too good for a hero. It's Joe Yankee, the hero of the day. Oh, let me wave my hanky. Ray, ray, ray. Ever hear of Joe Yankee? He's kind of a cross between Sir Galahad and, and Daniel Boone. He's full of moxie. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Right now, you're going back with me. Oh, no, I'm not. 
Sally and I are taking a little trip tomorrow. She isn't looking for Joe Yankee. Jeff Young's good enough for her. Plenty good enough. Yeah. New Orleans, Sun Valley, Mexico City. That's it, Mexico City. See the world while it's still here. So, here's to us. Ice. For my drink. Not my head. Lay off him. You're getting what you want down here. Why shouldn't I? You want his dough. I couldn't be on the level, could I? You never were with me. Tell him to go back to the field. You must think I'm crazy. I've always wanted to go to Mexico. Listen, how long do you think it would last? Jeff's no dope. What happens when he sobers up and finds you there? A cheap little jip with her hooks in him. They tried that once before and got into a lot of trouble. I'll tell him to go back to the field or I'll spill. Just try it. Colder than a well digger's icebox. <clears throat> Jeff! Have the blast. Success. Jeff, you better run along before you get in any more trouble. Why don't ice cubes come single and unattached instead of in letters? Jeff, did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. We're taking off for Mexico. And the trains don't leave from Randolph. Let's wait until you can fly me there. Look, I'm no flyer. That's Al's department. He's got it, and I haven't. Don't make me laugh. Come on, it's getting pretty late now. Oh! So you're running out on me, huh? You're one of these hot and cold propositions. I'm not running out on you, Jeff, honey. I'll be waiting around. I can tell you really don't want to break away now. You wouldn't be happy. Ah. Uh. Well, maybe you're right. You're a good kid, Sal. You're all right. Come on, let's run along now. You gonna call me in the morning? I promise I will. Early? Early. Good night, Jeff. That was smart, Sally. Not you. Your whole army can take him away from me. And don't you forget it. Nice kid, huh? Yeah. Wipe the paint off your puss. Mm -hmm. Kelly Field, here we come. The finest food in the Army for four months. Mammy. Oh, forget the food, knucklehead. Captain Mercer never did like your snap rolls. Well, he wouldn't wash us out in our final check. He taught us all we know. Don't let Hopkins hear you say that. Just think, Al. Faster ships, cross countries, night flying. Yeah. And a pair of wings. Oh, this is going to be a cinch. We're practically at Kelly now. Blanket at Young, reporting for final check, sir. do sit this one out I'm out 
the traffic to 2,000 feet into a practice area. Show me gentle, medium, and steep banks. job like this. I can't stand anymore. Take me home. Raunchy, very raunchy. I hate to pass you men on those rides, but we have to get somebody to Kelly. job you take, young lady, you better be close to home, like photographing the San Antonio waterworks. You missed me. Missed you? The day they turned me loose on cross country, I almost made it non-stop to Guatemala. Why'd you turn back? Got rather lonely down there. Oh, Mr. Campbell must be slipping. I thought he kept you too busy to be lonely. Maybe my mind wasn't on my work. Finish this dance on the terrace. Hey, Jeff, you want another horn? What? A uh, telephone call for you. Well, tear it up. I'm not taking any calls tonight. But Jeff. You'd better take this one. Oh. I, uh, I'm sorry, Callie. Will you excuse me? Yes, certainly. You know, Mr. Castor, you're wasting your time in the Air Corps. There's a distinguished career waiting for you on the diplomatic service. Yeah? Hello? Hello, Jeff. Why haven't you called? Well, I'm busy. Well, you can't be so busy. I hear there's a dance out there tonight. It's just a small party, our last night at Randolph. I can get away early. I think I'll drive out for a while. I wouldn't do that, Sally. Oh, Jeff, it's been weeks since I've seen you. Now, oh, Sally, I thought we'd been all through this. I thought we were going to be intelligent about it. What does that mean? Goodbye, good luck, we've had our fun. You go your way, I'll go mine. Don't try and sell me that routine, Jeff. I wish I could think of a better ending, but I can't. No? Well, maybe I can. I want to see you tonight. Sorry, I've made other plans. Listen, Mr. Jeff Young, you drop up at my place after that dance or I'll start making a few plans of my own. I'm expecting you. Attention to orders. 
Headquarters, Flying Cadet Detachment, the Air Corps Primary Flying School, Office of the Commandant, Randolph Field, Texas. Detachment order, order number 10. All existing appointments of flying cadets as officers and non-commissioned officers in the Flying Cadet Battalion are revoked, and the following appointments are announced. Effective upon departure for Kelly Field at 9 a.m. tomorrow. To be Senior Cadet Captain, Flying Cadet Ludlow, A.H. Congratulations, Ludlow. Well, I picked a good man that time. Yeah, but he was just getting to be a good guy, and now he has to start playing grandma. <laughs> Very stylish landing, mister. You know, it's funny. When I came down, I wasn't even looking at the field. Think I could get a job around here as a beacon? Oh, I have a better idea. Tell me something, Miss Bartlett. Uh, yes? How is it nobody ever married you before I will? I don't know. I suppose it's because of the funny kind of life I've made for myself. I think really it's because nobody ever made me want to give it up. Could you give it up for me? I know I could if you were just Lieutenant Young. Not Jefferson Young the third. See, I'd have to live your way. The new way for me. I think it frightens me just a bit. Well, don't worry. After I get my wings, I'm not going back to Long Island, Wall Street. The most tired coming out parties. I'm staying with the Air Corps. For good. Well, and I guess I am too. shouldn't be out here this late, Sally. It's against regulations. I could tell them about a few regulations you've broken, Mr. Young. Get in. Never mind that. Sally, you and I are through. Our account is closed. Is it? Oh, come on. 
Come on, Grandma. Button on your button and let's get going. On a double, old lady. Come on. All right, bright boys. Just don't let me lose you in the turns, that's all. Oh, ho. Get from Randolph. Yeah, it's Captain Mercer. <laughs> well, hello. Certainly glad to see you, sir. Oh, you've been laying for me, eh? No, sir. You weren't as tough as all that. <laughs> Well, I see all three are still here. Yes, they're still here. We've proved that flying is safe. I guess you have at that. <laughs> are you transferred over here, sir? No, just over here on business. I've been assigned to a flying fortress squadron next month out at March Field. You know, I'd like to have you men in my outfit if you're assigned to bombardment. That's where we really separate the men from the boys. Well, that lets Cassidy out. As you were, chump. <laughs> you know, uh, you know how glad I am to see you three finishing the course. I'd like to give you one more piece of advice. You're at the peak right now. Hot pilots. Out in the service, you'll run into older pilots. Old fuds like me that aren't what they used to be. You can fly rings around them. But have a heart, boys. Break the news to them gently. <laughs> What's an old fud? That's what Grandma's going to grow up to be. Oh. <laughs> One more week and then second lieutenant with wings. Forty-five minutes of safe and sane flying behind Grandma here and we're through. What do you want me to do, dive on the colonel's quarters? Oh, no, we wouldn't think of it. <laughs> what, hop a hedge? Well, that's against the scout's oath. Grandma, eh? All right, I'll give you guys a workout.
Help. They'll wash me out for this, won't they, Jeff? it is this anyway. Graduation day and they throw out the best man in the class. There's something he was no more responsible for than I. Just because you were the leader. Everybody hedge hopped once in a while. We egged you into it. Tom happened to be the one who slipped up. I am responsible. If you'd listen to me, we could have cooked up a story. Don't you think I felt bad enough without lying out of it? And you didn't do me any good when you horned in on the blame. Almost got yourself washed out, too. So what's the difference? I'm quitting anyway. Fed up with their kind of discipline. You can have it and take a running full twist into the lake. Ah, uh, cool off. You'll feel better after they pin those wings on you. Wings? I'll hang them in my trophy room. Where do you get off talking like that? You got no beef? You came down here a polo playing drip and they made a flyer out of you. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Look, uh, you're the best friend I've ever had. I just don't want to see you go off your nut. Uh, I'm washed up, sure. Just wasn't in the cards for me. We both wanted something when we came down here. We both felt the same way. And if I'm not in the Air Corps, I want to know that you're in. That you got the thing we both wanted. And you earned it. The hard way. That's something your money won't buy. That's something bigger than you or me. Stick with it, Jeff. Come on, get going. You gotta fly that review. I'll see you later. Speed the better the takeoff. But Jeff and I have plans for you. Well, thanks. I'd rather be on my own. Where are you going? It's a big country. Tell Jeff so long and to stay on the beam. You know what I mean. That's from both of us. How many aviators do you kiss with, sister? Sally, stop it. Try and make me. I know. I read about you and Jeff. A big military wedding for asbestos there. No, you don't want to go out there, Sally. Oh, don't I? I'm tired of being pushed around. So they're giving him his wings. They won't dare when I get through. I'll give him a scandal that'll shake the army. I'll tell him a bedtime story they won't forget. I'll let her go. Jeff hasn't seen her in months. That's your story. He's seen me lots of times. What do you think I got his car? Let go of me. Jeff Young can't pick me up and drop me without seeing where I'm going to land. I'll make him marry me. Sally, be sensible. You can't make anybody marry you. Can't I? Who do you think I am? Snow White? I'm in trouble.
Jeff gave you kind of a rotten deal, didn't he? I'll say he did. But I'll make him squirm. I'll take care of that pal of yours. He's no pal of mine. Not after the way he kicked you around. Well, I'm through being kicked around. I don't know what's the matter with me. I don't want to hurt anybody. But they're always hurting me. Look, Sally, uh, Jeff's got another half hour in the air. There's no sense starting anything until you've had a talk with him. I think you need a drink. I'll say I do. Might be able to fix something up. Why aren't you up there? Well, they washed me out. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? The same old Al. You and me both just a couple of... Also, Rand's. Come on, Al, I need that drink. in 10 minutes. This is game for you, sir. Oh, thanks. Well, Mr. Young, where's Miss Bartlett? Well, I'd like to know. Well, if you see her first, tell her I'm looking for her. Got this. Oh, no. What made him do a thing like that? Can't you imagine? No, I can't. I had no idea that there was Jeff, anything. Have you been seeing Sally? Oh, yes, I have. She threatened to go to the commandant. I wanted my wings, so I saw her. Gave her a check. Do you think that takes care of everything? What do you expect me to do? Jeff, one can't use a checkbook for a conscience. But what's that got to do with us? A lot. I've had a swell time on my own, Jeff. I've got to know what I'm giving it up for. Look, just because Sally... She was here this afternoon. I spoke to her and so did Al. What did she say? Don't you know? Al drove away with her. You wouldn't be getting your wings today if it weren't for him. Pleasant thought, isn't it? Jeff, I wonder if you're worth what he did for you. No, I'm not. Lawrence, C.T. Thank you, Congratulations, sir. Mr. Lawrence. Thank you, sir. Wilcox, T.A. Congratulations, Mr. Wilcox. Thank you, sir. Young, Jay. Congratulations, Mr. Young. Thank you, sir. Arden, M.
Congratulations, Mr. Young. Thank you, Congratulations, sir. Mr. Argo. Thank you, sir. Rutherford D. Rim, K.J. Why, Mr. Vanessa? And me, a respectably married woman for six months. Sure, I like it. I'm up to my elbows in diamonds and down to my knees in silver fox. Cut the clowning, Tony. Haven't you got a spot for me at the Paradise? I don't want a trip to Florida. I want a job. I know. They got big oranges in Florida. Uh-uh. The doctor told me to stay in Kansas City. Smoke's good for what I've got. Vanessi. Okay, Tony, skip it. Yes, you one I don't think I like. I'm sorry I bothered you. The wolf. He was a nice kid when he was a barber. Czar of the numbers racket, something else. Did you... No, nothing. Well, don't bite my head off. Just wanted to know how you wanted your eggs. Scrambled. Would have been a commission job anyway. Don't kid me, Al. You didn't want that job. You don't want any job except flying. I told you I was through with flying. How about cooking those eggs? Oh, I'm sick of cooking for you. I'm sick of this cheap dump. I'll have to stay here. I can skip any time I want to. You think the baby's stopping me? Well, there isn't any baby. There never was. I knew that, Sally. Then what did you marry me for? So you didn't want to help me. You didn't care anything about me. I didn't matter. What a sucker I've been. Trying to make a go for two cent marriage while all the time you're grandstanding for a guy named Jeff Young. It's on me, isn't it, Al? Turbo supercharged on 32. Another two hours, sir. That's just dandy. So they sent us the B-17B, eh? How about 32? Is she going to be ready on time? Not for another two hours at least, sir. All we've got is 20 minutes. Good thing we sent to Hamilton for a spare. We'll have to use her. Did she come down with a full enlisted crew? I don't know, sir. I just on my way to check. We'd better find out. I want to use the crew that came with it. You can relieve those men. All right, sir. All right, Sergeant. Tell your men to knock off. We won't use that ship.
Crew chief. Up front, sir. Where's the rest of your crew? I'm getting something to eat, sir. I can have them back in five minutes. Al! How are you? Gee, you're looking great, fella. See, you're still with it. But where have you been? I dragged the whole country for you. Did you? Oh, I, um, I moved around pretty much. How's Sally? Well, last I heard, she was in Florida. We're washed up, you know. How's Carolyn? Oh, I, I haven't seen her since graduation. She's up north somewhere. I keep myself too busy to think about her. Say, crew chief on a bomber, that's doing all right in the year. Oh, um, acting crew chief, sir. You know, expansion. Oh, whatever. don't give me that sir stuff. By the rights, I should be taking orders from you. Young. Yes, sir. Come meet your commanding officer. What's wrong with the emergency release? Door doesn't drop, sir. Air Corps supply won't have parts until tomorrow. Well, <laughs> Ludlow. Can't stay away from it, can you? Well, if I can't fly them, sir, I can at least polish their wings. Well, I'm glad you're back with us. Thank you, sir. I'll go get the report, sir. Gets in your blood, doesn't it? As a man, it should be flying. Mm. Can we do something, sir? Well, I've got a friend or two in the chief's office. Cases have been reconsidered before. Right now, we've got other things to do. She's all ready to go, sir, except for that emergency release. Well, we can't ground the ship for that. Take care of it first thing tomorrow. Yes, sir. Oh, we're uh, service testing a new type of experimental flare on the way back tonight. But don't install it in the bomb bay until after all other flares have been released. Say, so, yeah. Al. I spoke to Mercer about another crack at Kelly. He said he'd go to bat for you. Do you think there's a chance? Well, you know Mercer. If there's a chance, he'll swing it. You really think so? Sure. But look, right now, I'm late for the pilot's meeting. But when we get back tonight, we got a lot to talk about. Where can I find Lieutenant Young? Al. What are you doing here? They followed me here. The police are out there now. Get out of here. But Al, I'm your wife. I'm in a jam, a bad one. Tony Vanessi's dead. Somebody killed him. They framed me. They said I did it. Did you? Oh, did you? Yes, and I'd do it again. You were born to kill somebody, Sally. Hit me. Hurt me. Shut up. You can't stay here. But, Al, you've always helped me. You've never let me down. Got any money? Here, take this. Will you see your chance and slip out of the hangar and get back to Los Angeles? Will you meet me there, Al? You're on your own, Sally. Al, please, I don't know where to turn. I gotta talk to somebody. Please, tomorrow night, Al, please. All right, all right. I'll meet you at the bus station tomorrow night. They must have turned me out labeled sucker. Now, get out of here. We're taking off right away. I'll see you tomorrow night, Al. Here we go again, boys. Oh, Boy, how do you like that job? Speed, Joe. I'm going to give you speed. ten minutes more, boys. 
The old man says we're going upstairs. Here we go to play war games. Yep, let it is real this time. It's supposed to be an air raid tonight. Second Monterey to warning net command. 27 heavy bombers passing over here at estimated altitude 12,000, changing course from south to east. Navigated to commander over Santa Barbara. First at the 32nd Squadron, extinguish your navigation lights. Hold your altitude at 12,000. over Glendale, one and one-half minutes. You sure got Los Angeles blacked out. Bombardier to Commander, objective visible. Pressure to 32nd Squadron. Squadron approaching objective. Bombardier stand by to release magnesium bomb control on assigned targets. Bombay doors. Looks as 
if we lost them. Mercy to 32nd Squadron. Proceed individually to simulated occupation of dispersed airdrome. Head from Muroc, Dry Lake. occupation in about 10 minutes. Better get those experimental flares installed. Yes, sir. Tentative results from GHQ, sir. BS-1 to WMZ. BS-1 to WMZ. Commanding General, 1st Wing, GHQ Air Force, March Field. White Pursuit in Oh, get me out of here. I can't stand it here. I can't breathe. I think let me go up and run out. You must be crazy. You want him to see you? You stay right here until I come and get you and stay put. Now. Where are those flares? In 15 seconds, I could blow us all to glory. Understand? No, I can't stand it in here any longer. I can't. You will. Dr. Cole. Al, don't leave. Get out of Serious burns, sir, and head injuries. Looks like internal injuries, too. I'm afraid he's dying. Adrenaline, quick. Young. You're a fool. Whoever taught you to land a plane in the middle of the night in a spot. Like this. Alcohol. I didn't. You're pretty seriously hurt, sir. We have to get you to a hospital. You're staying right here. Jones. Right here, sir. Contact March on the main transmitter. Tell them we're staying here. Yes, sir. Never mind that message. They located at March. Never get out of here. That ridge. We're taking off. Anybody like to stay? 
All right. Get that stretcher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
on the ship. She was in trouble. Yeah, I loved her. Lieutenant Young said that the court would never believe that I didn't know my wife was aboard the ship. He said I'd be finished for good. I'd never get another chance. He said he knew he had to go, but there was no sense in both of us taking it. And that's why he pleaded guilty. To shield me. That's all. No further witnesses. Room will be cleared while the court deliberates its verdict. Good luck. Why, Carolyn. I heard about this and thought you might want to see me. Thanks for coming. I'm here to stay this time, Jeff. If you want me. Yes, I want you. But they're about to tie a tin can to my tail. Doesn't matter. Maybe not to you, but it will to a lot of people. Darling, a lot of people will never know what you've done. But I know. Proud. No matter what verdict they reach in there. It's for both of us. Of the specification, charge one. Not guilty. The court finds that Lieutenant Gunn's decision to disregard Captain Mercer's command was justified under the extraordinary circumstances. Captain Mercer's life was at stake, and Lieutenant Young had a reasonable right to doubt the binding nature of a command given by a man so gravely injured. Of the specification charge two, not guilty. Goodbye, Jeff. Goodbye, sir. Ludlow. You made a monkey out of me once at Kelly. Don't do it again. I won't, sir. You like a kiss? You wanted wings, mister? Go get them. Blow hard, Lieutenant. You're a big boy now. <laughs> <laughs>